Good day, everyone. Now, seniors, let's continue with our exercise on variation. We stopped at number seven, so we continue with number eight. Question eight says, if p varies directly as the cube, if p varies directly as the cube of q, or if p varies directly as q raised to power three, find and p is equal to and p is equal to 32 when q is 2. The question says, find q when p is 40, find q when p is 60, 64, and 100. So we have a lot of values of q to find. First thing we need to do here is very straightforward. Write a relationship for p and q, introducing the constant. So p is equal to k times q raised to power 3. We change this variation sign to an equation by slotting in our equality sign and our constant. So the question says p is 32 when q is 2. So we can use this set of values of p and q to get our constant. How do we do that? 32, we just replace it in this equation. 32 will be k times q which is 2 when p is 32 so 32 will be k times 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 3 is what 8 so 32 is k times 8 that gives you what 32 is 8k 8k is 32 that gives you 32 is 8k 8k is 32 k is 32 over 8 and what k is 4 so if we know k as 4 in our relationship we can replace our k with what 4 so uh, the relationship between p and q will be what p is equal to 4 times q raised to power 3. now keep that in mind let's now go to the first part of the question check the table the first part of the question says we should find q this was not there before i just found it since we should find q or let me just delete it the first part of the question says we should find q when p is 40. i think that's pretty straightforward simple let's go ahead and do that we need q when p is what 40. so first thing write down the relationship p is equal to 4 times q raised to power 3. so 40 will be 4 times q raised to power 3. So rearranging, what do we get when we rearrange? 4 times q raised to power 3 is equal to 40. Divide both sides by 4. Divide this side by 4. You will have q raised to power 3. Divide the right hand side 2 by 4. 40 over 4 will give you 10. So we have q raised to power 3 is what? is 10. If q raised to power 3 is 10, it means q is the cube root. q is the cube root of what? 10. So we come in here, we come back here to this part of the table and we can fill our cube root of 10 in. We're going to do the same thing for 60. We need to find q when p is 60. So let's go. Second part says we should find Q when P is 60. Look at this very well. When P is 60 and we need Q, first thing we do is to write the relationship out. What's the relationship between P and Q? P is equal to 4 times Q raised to power 3. That's the relationship between P and Q. Now, P is 60 and we are looking for Q. So, 60 is equal to 4 times q raised to power 3. 4 times q raised to power 3 is 60. You can rearrange. So q raised to power 3 is 60 over 4. q raised to power 3 is what? 60 over 4. That gives you q raised to power 3 is 15. And q is what? The cube root of 15. So when p is 60, q is equal to the cube root of what of 15 so i can come here and fill my value cube root 15 
when p is 60. You did the same thing for p is 64 and p is 100. Find their corresponding values of q and fill them in those empty boxes. Let me clean those question marks so that you can see. What I expect you to do here is simple. I expect you to pause the video, you know, try getting this yourselves. And when you get the answer, play again and check your correction. That would be very, very sensible and nice to do. So P is 64. When Q is, we need Q when P is 64. We do it just the same way. Write our relationship between P and Q. Write the relationship between what P and Q. Substitute correctly. Rearrange. You know, 4 times Q raised to the power 3 is 64. Q raised to the power 3 is 64 over 4. Q raised to the power 3 is 16. And Q is cube root of 16. The same thing goes for the last part of the question. Where we are to find Q when P is 100. So, you look at it very well. Let's now go to question 9. In question 9, we are told that x varies inversely as the square root of y. x varies inversely as the square root of y. So, x varies inversely as the square root of y. So, and we are told that x is 3 when y is 1. x varies inversely as the square root of y. And x is 3 when y is 1. That's a simple question. First thing is to jot down our relationship. Our relationship would be to change this to an equality sign and introduce a constant up there. So x will be equal to k over what? x is equal to k over root 1. Now, x is 3 when y is 1. That makes life very easy for us. So we come back here and say it means 3 is equal to k over root 1 because x is 3 when y is what 1 so 3 is equal to k over root 1 now if 3 is equal to k over root 1 what does that mean 3 over 1 is equal to k over 1 because the square root of 1 is 1 look at this question well very easy you understand x is 3 when y is 1 so that gives what 3 is equal to k over root 1. Substituting 1 for y will give you 3 is equal to k over root 1. That gives us 3 over 1 is k over 1. The square root of 1 is also what? 1. So, cross multiplying, you get k is 3. So, go back to your relationship where you add x is equal to k over root y. Now that we know the value of k as 3, we don't have any problem again we can just switch our value and our relationship will change to x is equal to 3 divided by root y can you see that we've gotten the value of k so we put it where k is and our relationship will look more explicit the question now says the question now says let me call this room and one one that we should find the value of y when k is 5 sorry the question says we should find the value of y when x is 5 we should find the value of y when x is 5 so let's go ahead and do that first thing we do is to write that the relationship x is 3 over root y so we are looking for y when x is 5 when x is 5 we need the value of y so after writing our relationship it means 5 is equal to 3 over root 1 change this 5 to 5 over 1 and cross multiply that will give you 5 root y is equal to 3 5 root y is equal to 3 so root y is 3 over 5 square both sides to get your y you square both sides when I square both sides here, what do I get? Let me write that neatly. So when I square both sides, what do I get? I'm going to square the left root y all squared 
and I'm going to square the right 3 over 5 all squared. So here you can easily see the 2 will cancel the root and I get what? I get y left. Then here this will give me 3 over 5 times 3 over 5 which gives me what? 25 9 sorry which gives me 9 over 25. That's the value of y when x is what? 5. Let's go to the second part. I think we can fill it if we like. 9 over 25. We need the value of y when x is 8. We want the value of y when x is what? 8. So let's go ahead and get that. First thing to do here too is to write our relationship part. Let me call that part of question 9, Roman number 2. We need the value of y when x is 8. So first thing is to write our relationship part. Our relationship is x is equal to 3 over root y. This is the relationship that we got between x and y. So let's substitute now. That means 8. Can you see what I'm doing? That means 8 is equal to 3 over root y. Since in this question we are told x is 8. And when x is 8, <coughs> we are to find the value of y. So substitute 8 for x. 8 is equal to 3 over root y. Now, what does that mean? So let's you know let's just keep one under the 80 and cross multiply. That gives me 8 root y is 3 times 1, 3. What does that give you? Root y is 3 over 8. You square both sides. Every time this happens, you what? Square both sides. When I square both sides, what will I have on the left? Root y all squared is equal to 3 over 8 all squared. You know, you can see this. We do it all the time. Root we divide. Root we take out the square root. Square root. Uh, power the, the 2. The power 2 we take out the root. So you have y left. And that means what? y is 3 over 8 times 3 over 8. The square of 3 over 8 is 3 over 8 times 3 over 8, which is 9 over 64. So when x is 8, y is what? 9 over 64. I can actually go back here and fill that in. Let's now find y when x is 15. Let's find y when x is 15. Okay, let me call that Roman numeral 3. I need to find y when x is 15. We need the value of y when x is what? 15. So, first thing, the relationship. The relationship between x and y is x is equal to 3 over root y. So, substitution will give us 15 is 3 over root y. Let's change 15 to 15 over 1 and cross multiply. 15 root y is equal to what? 3. That gives us what? Root y is 3 over 15. And that will mean what? That gives us root y is 3 over 15. So root y is 1 over 5. If you square both sides, what do you get when you square both sides? Square both sides, what do you get? You get root y all squared is 1 over 5 all squared. Root y all squared is 1 over 5 all squared. That's what. Let's just take out our root. Our root with our power, we take out the root. And that gives you what? That gives you y is 1 over 5 times 1 over 5. The square of 1 over 5 is 1 over 5 times 1 over 5 so your y is equal to 1 over 25 y is 1 over 25 when x is 15 <coughs> that ends that i'm going to leave the remaining two oh okay it's now remaining one okay i think we got what for this one 
over 25 so you find the last one yourself that should be your class work now that's that ends question 9 let's go to question 10 now let's go to question 10 now. okay that ends question 8b so i've been doing question 8b and not question 9 let me quickly change the number we have been on question 8b from here question 8b and not question 9 that was a mistake sorry so this was actually question 8a question 8a so we are done with question 8 now let's move to question 9 we are done with question 8 now let's move to question 9 question 9 says if x varies inversely as y if x varies inversely as y let's write an expression for that x varies inversely as y and what and x is 3 over 7 when y is 27 and x is 3 over 7 and x is equal to 3 over 7 when y is 27 the question says no when y is 21 x is 3 over 7 when y is 21 find the value of y <coughs> find the value of y when x is 2 over 5 okay find the value of y when x is 2 over 5 that's also very simple that's a simple straightforward question first thing we do is that our variation is x varies inversely as y so from this variation we change it to an equation x is equal to k over y you understand change this variation to an equation by just introducing your equality sign and the constant so that helps us change our variation to an equation keep that in mind very important this question now says x is what 3 over 7 when y is 21 what does that tell you anywhere you see x here change it to what 3 over 7 so 3 over 7 is k over 21 x is 3 over 7 when y is 21 and x is equal to what x should be equal to k over y so we write 3 over 7 is equal to k over 21 okay what will that give us cross multiply what do you get 7k 7k is 3 times 21 k will be 3 times 21 over 7 sorry about the way i wrote that so 3 3 times 3 9 so that means k is what 9 that tells you k is 9 if k is 9 go back to your relationship that says x is k over y go back to your relationship which says says what x is k over y if x is equal to k over y and you know your k now you now know your k as what as 9 that means the relationship between x and y will be x is equal to 9 over y take note of this this is the relationship between x and y x is equal to 9 over y the question now says we should find the value of y when x is 2 over 5 we now need the value of y when x is what 2 over 5 that's straightforward that's straightforward when x is 2 over 5 we need the value of y we just substitute 2 over 5 for x and 9 over y will be written on the right so let's now find the value of y when x is what 2 over 5 what do you do here cross multiply 2y is 9 times 5 y will be 9 times 5 over 2 so y is what y is 45 over 2 or 22.5 so when x is 2 over 5 
y is 22.5 is there any other thing in number nine no that's all okay let's go to number 10 number 10 says if x plus y x plus y varies directly as y so first thing we write our expression question 10 question 10 x plus y x plus y varies directly okay x plus 3 varies directly as y x plus 3 varies directly as y okay and x is 3 when y is 12 read the question one. and x is 3 when y is 12 now if x plus y varies x is 3 okay let's take it that way and x is equal to 3 when y is equal to 12. okay first of all the relationship between these two the equation between them will be x plus 3 is equal to ky from here from this variation and to change it to an equation by introducing my equality sign and k and throwing away by introducing my equality sign and k and k and throwing away this variation symbol so i won't have it there anymore exactly so x plus 3 will be equal to ky now the question says that when x is 3 y is what 12 so 3 plus 3 is equal to k times 12 assume that this is <coughs> now the value of x so 6 is equal to what 12k 12k is 6 k is what 6 over 12 and k is 1 over 2 now that we know the value of k we go back to our relationship and our relationship will be what x plus 3 is equal to instead of k y i'm not going to write 1 over 2 for k so that means my relationship is x plus 3 is y over 2 you know 1 over 2 times y is the same thing as y over 2 that's the relationship that's the relationship between x and y can you see that hmm? that's the relationship between x and y so let's go ahead and answer the remaining part of the question the next part of the question says what is the value of y sorry what is the value of x when y is 8 that's simple that's very simple what is the value of x when y is 8 so first thing write that you want x when y is what 8 let me write my comma well so first thing is to write the relationship out x plus 3 is y over 2 now i want x i want x when y is what 8 so x plus 3 will be 8 over 2 i've substituted i've substituted what i've substituted 8 for y that's what i've just done here because i now know the value of y as 8 and i'm looking for the value of x when y is 8 so let's go forward this will give you x plus 3 is equal to 4 so x is 4 minus 3 and x is equal to what x is equal to 1 x is 4 minus 3 and x is equal to 1 so that's that x is 4 minus 3 and x is equal to 1 so let's go on number 10 that's number 10 number 10 is gone let's go to question 11 let's go to question 11 so question 11 says if y varies directly as 1 over x squared okay that's the same thing as y varying inversely as x squared question 11 says let me move it down a bit if y varies if y varies inversely 
as what? x squared. If y varies inversely as x squared, straight away, let's introduce our constant straight and throw away the variation sign. So y is equal to k over x squared. And y is 1, 1 over 4 when x is 4. And what? y is equal to 1 over 1 over 4 when x is 4. The question says, okay, let's use this to find the relationship state straight. What it means is that don't divide your pages, please, in order to be clear. In y is equal to k over x squared, I'll just go ahead and write 1, 1 over 4 for y and make this k over 4 squared. Because it says when y is 1, 1 over 4, x is 4. So I'll just write 1, 1 over 4 for y and what? Make this k over x squared knowing that x is 4 so what does that take us to that takes us to 5 over 4 1 1 over 4 is 5 over 4 1 1 over 4 is 5 over 4 so 5 over 4 is k over 16 okay 5 over 4 is k over 16 so 4k is equal to 5 times 16. k will be equal to 5 times 16 over 4. k is equal to 5 times 16 over 4. So k is 5 times 4. k is what? 20. If we know k, now that we know k as 20, our relationship can now be written in full as what? y is 20 over x squared so instead of using y is equal to k over x squared now that i know the value of k i'll just come here i'll just come here and replace my k with 20 which is the value i got for k so i now know my relationship completely let's go check the next part of the question now the next part of the question says Find the value of y when x is 1 over 2. Find the value of y when x is 1 over 2. That's pretty simple and straightforward. From the relationship, y should be 20 over x squared. So if we need y when x is 1 over 2, we just do 20. We just do y is equal to 20 over 1 over 2 squared. That will give you what? That will give you y is equal to 20 divided by 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. 1 over 2 squared is the same thing as 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. So that makes it what? y is 20 all over 1 over 4. So 20 all over 1 over 4 will give us y is 20 times 4 over 1. You know, like we do in uh, fractions, at the end of the day, when you do blah, 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 20 divided by 1 over 4, 20 times 4 over 1. This will just multiply, simplify, and you get 20 times 1, 4 over 1. So, let's go ahead and simplify that. What does it give us? That will give us what? That will give us y is 80. So, when x is half, y is 80. That ends question 11. Let's go to question 12. Question 12 says, if V varies inversely as the square root of H. If V varies inversely as the square root of what? Of H. Okay. Number 12. V varies inversely as the square root of H. And V is equal to 5 when H is 64. First thing is to get the relationship between V and H. So 5 is equal. Okay, let's introduce our constant first. If V varies inversely as the square root of H, it means V is equal to K over what? Root H. I hope you can see that, senior. All I just did was change this symbol to what? To equality sign and introduce my constant. Is that clear? 
so v is equal to k over root h v is 5 so 5 is equal to k over root h that's root 64 so simplifying what do i get 5 is 5 over 1 let's cross multiply k will be equal to 5 times root 64 and k is what 5 times 8 5 times 8 means k is what 40 so now that i know the value of k i will go back to my relationship and change the value of k in that relationship to to what to 40 so my relationship will now change to what relationship is v is equal to instead of writing k over root h and i write v is equal to 40 over root h so this is the relationship between v and h now next part of the question says okay find the value of h when v is 1 3 over 5 so sometimes this relationship is also called the law connecting v and h so let me write that here that's the first part of our question that we should find the law connecting v and h so this is the law that's required the question says we should find the law connecting v and h this is that law law means the same thing as relationship between v and h so let's go on. it says now that in b the second part of the question says we should find the value of h when v <coughs> the second part of the question says we should find the value of h when v is what one three over five i'm trying to go back to my question i think i've lost the page okay i'll get there now it says we should find the value of h when v is what one three over five so let's go it says find the value of h question b says find the value of h when v is what one three over five so that gives you what <clears throat> first thing we do to find h or v when we know one and we want the other first thing we do is to rewrite the is to just write down or bring forward or copy the relationship the relationship is v is equal to 40 over root h the relationship is what v is equal to 40 over root h so 1 3 over 5 that means 1 3 over 5 is equal to 40 over root h because we want the value of h when v we want the value of h when what when v is 1 3 over 5 let's simplify 1 3 over 5 is the same thing as 8 over 5 <clears throat> so 8 over 5 is 40 over root h how do you do this cross multiply 8 times root h is equal to what 5 times 40 when you cross multiply that gives you what that gives you root h is equal to 5 times 40 divided by 8 5 times 40 divided by 8 is the same thing as 5 times 5 because 8 in 40 is what 5 so I don't, you are not expected to cancel what we write, so don't let the cancelling show. You can use it, but use it in your mind. Don't cancel what you've written for your examiner. So root h is 5, root h is 25. How do we get h if root h is 25? We just square both sides. It's as simple as that. We square both sides. If I square the left hand side, I will get root h all squared is what? 25 squared. When I square the right hand side, when I square the left hand side, I'll get root h all squared. When I square the right hand side, <clears throat> I'll get 25 all squared. So that gives you what? The square will take out the root sign. So you just have h left and 25 times 25. What's that? 625. So that ends question 12.
let's go to question 13 we are moving forward it's a it's a short exercise in question 13 it says the distance covered by a car the distance covered by a car is directly proportional to the time taken so here we are not given the letters that means we are the ones to pick our letters ourselves are you getting what i'm saying seniors it says the distance covered by a car is directly proportional to the time taken let's use d to represent distance let's use d to represent distance and t to represent time taken so this means d will be equal to k times t the next part of the question says if a car travels a distance of 200 kilometers in two and a half hours that means that means d is equal to 200 kilometers when t is equal to two and a half hours if a car travels a distance of 200 kilometers in two and a half hours find a the distance the car will cover in eight hours so that means in question a in question a they want us to find d when t is eight hours so that's pretty simple let's just go ahead and find the relationship how do we get our relationship d is equal to kt we've written that here that d is equal to what k times t but d is 200 d is what 200 when t is what five when t is what two and a half so that means 200 will be k times what two one over two so i'm substituting this complete set that i have this complete set of values i have i'm substituting it here 200 for d and what <coughs> two and a half for <clears throat> two and a half for t to find my k so that means 200 is k times 5 over 2 2 times 2 4 plus 1 5 5 over 2 that gives me what 5k over 2 you know the k is k times k is k over 1 k times 5 5k then 1 times 2 2 so that gives me 5k over 2 is 200 over 1 when we cross multiply what do we get we'll get 5k is 2 times what 200 so k is 2 times 200 all over what 5 so k is 2 times 200 all over 5 that gives you what k is 400 over 5 <coughs> so k is what 80 that gives you k is 80. so in that relationship what did we write we said our relationship is d is equal to kt so we won't write k again now that would mean that our relationship will be d is equal to what att you know now that we know now that we know the value of k we just replace it in the relationship so we replace k with 80 to get our relationship completely so the question says find the distance traveled <coughs> in eight hours that means you need the distance traveled d when t is what eight hours or just eight so using d using the relationship using the relationship d is equal to 80 t d will be 80 distance traveled will be 80 times 8 80 times 8 is what 640 kilometers so the distance traveled in 8 hours is 640 kilometers question b says the time find the time taken for the car to cover 500 kilometers so in b in b the question is similar to a just that our requirement has been swapped 
find the time taken to cover a distance of 500 kilometers. So we are looking for T when D is 500 kilometers. That's pretty straightforward. First thing to write down is our relationship. D is equal to ATT. So 500 for the value of D will be 80 times T for the value of time. So if you rearrange, ATT is 500. T is equal to 500 over 80. T is equal to 500 over 80. That gives you what? T is equal to 50 over 8. And that's what? The time taken to cover a distance of 500 kilometers will be 6 and what? 6, 1 over 4 hours. So, I think I got that right. Let's go to question 14. Question 14 now. Question 14 says, if P, if P varies directly as Q raised to power 3. Okay, I'll jot that down straight. If P varies directly as Q raised to power 3. So, straight away, I can change it to an equation. P will be k p will be equal to k times q raised to power 3 and p is equal to 4 when q is 1 <coughs> and p is equal to 4 when q is 1 p is equal to 4 when what when q is equal to 1 so let's get our relationship straight all i need to do is replace my you know replace my p and q with 4 and 1 to get the value of k so p is 4 when q is 1 so 4 will be equal to k times 1 raised to power 3 1 raised to power 3 is what 3 that gives you what 4 is k times 1 and what 4 is k or k is what 4 so our relationship this is meant to be a relationship but initially we didn't know the value of k we have now used this complete set to find the value of k so all that we need to do now is p is equal to 4q cube so your answer will be your answer will be what therefore our relationship is p is what 4 times q raised to power 3. That's the relationship between p and q. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. It says find the value of q when p is 32. Find the value of, okay, relationship, first part. Let's call it a. Now that we have a, okay, it's not separated. Find the value of Q when P is 32. They are not separated, so no need. Let's just leave it blank. You can put it if you like. The question says, find the value. Find the value of what? Find the value of P. We need P when Q is what? 32. Find the value. Okay, value of Q when P is 32. Excuse me, I almost got that mixed up. Find the value of P. Oh, find the value of Q. Find the value of Q when P is 32. Let me check again. It is P that is 32. And we are looking for the value of Q when P is 32. First thing to write out is our relationship. What's our relationship? Our relationship is P is equal to what? 4 times Q raised to power 3. So, we are looking for Q when P is 32. That means 32, P is 32, is equal to 4 times Q raised to power 3. What does this give you? Rearranging. What does it give you? You get 4 times Q raised to power 3 is equal to 32 you may leave this out if you don't like it just write your four times q raised to power three and rearrange 
the multiplication sign is not compulsory so 4 times q raised to power 3 <clears throat> 4 times q raised to power 3 is 32 gives you q raised to power 3 is 32 over 4 so q raised to power 3 is 8 q raised to power 3 is 8 q is q root of 8 so q is what 2 q is 2 1 p is 32 okay that ends question that ends question 14 let's take question 15 next it says if m varies inversely as the cube root of n if m varies inversely as the cube root of n m varies inversely as the cube root of n that's what the expression means straight away let me introduce my constant straight away let's not waste any of our seconds and m is equal to 1 if m varies inversely as the cube root of n and m is equal to 1 when n is equal to 27 and m is equal to 1 when n is equal to 27 m is equal to 1 when n is 27 let me jot that down m is 1 when n is 27 okay straightforward the next thing would be to find our relationship so 1 is equal to k over cube root of 27 the cube root of 27 is 3 so 1 over 1 is k over 3 when you cross multiply you get k as 3 if you bring k back into this expression your relationship becomes m is equal to 3 over cube root of n so our relationship now will be m is equal to 3 over cube root of n now that we know k as what 3 so that's our relationship we keep that okay let's go ahead the question says we should find n when m is 9 so the question says we should find n when m is 9 okay that's pretty straightforward we should find n when what the question says we should find n when m is 9 so that's straightforward so m is 9 means 9 m is 9 means m is 9 means 9 will be equal to 3 over cube root of n <clears throat> it is n that we are looking for when m is 9 so 9 over 1 is 3 over cube root of n let's now cross multiply what does this give you this will give you 9 times cube root of n is equal to what 3 times 1 3 can you see that so that means 9 okay that means the cube root of n will be 3 over 9 <clears throat> i hope you get this step i'm actually dividing both sides i'm dividing both sides by 9 this side by 9 this side by 9 now we cut 9 i have cube root of n left i have cube root of n left and i will have 3 over 9 on the right hand side so that means the cube root of n is 1 over 3 <clears throat> that means the cube root of n is 1 over 3 so cube root of n raised to power 3 i'll cube both sides to get my answer all i just need to do is what cube both sides so cube root of n raised to power 3 is 1 over 3 raised to power 3 so that means what 3 3 you understand the power will cancel the cube root so i have n left can you see how that works so what that means is that my n will be 1 over 3 raised to power 3 so my n is 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 
times 1 over 3 and that gives me what n as 1 over 27 so when m is 9 n is 1 over 27 okay we have just a few left and we'll take it in the next video we have just a very few left we take the rest in the next video